Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Invest Her Show, Minnesota edition. And we are talking about, Andressa, why you should be treating your small multi as a large property and how to do so. So excited oh boy, about that I'm topic. Curious. I'm curious about it. What's gonna, what are you going to say about that? I'm not sure. I never didn't talk about it. So this is going <laughs> to be a surprise for me, too, as I hear you. All right. Awesome. So so what this topic is really about for me is that we have really managed and bought and owned single family homes through what? What's the largest building we own? Probably 336 unit, I would say, in terms of an actual property, in terms of doors. So we've owned a lot of different types of properties and different size properties. And what I can say is that I didn't realize the power of treating your small properties as though you actually have a large property and how important that would have been when we had the small multis. So what do I mean by that? So as we transitioned to larger multis and our, our path was very, uh, what's the word, kind of sequential and, and it kind of went in like a, a really nice kind of, once we focused on multi, it went from like a four unit to a 10 unit to an 18 unit. So we, we kind of grew very um, you know, steadily, if you will. And something that we started to really realize, especially when you start to get to around 100 doors or more, is what's important to the people that live there. First off, you don't call them tenants. You call them residents. Large multifamily, that's, that's the first kind of, you know, uh, in a sense, like almost like you're treating them differently from a, they're a tenant versus a resident. I mean, you think about it. That's just that those words right there, you're going to really kind of, you know, really embody and really uh, start to say, how can I serve my customer differently than tenant? Uh, it's, a, it's a different vibe. It's a different energy, right? I feel that when you call them tenants, it's like they're there, you're the boss, they right. pay you rent. But when you call residents, the power shifts. You are there to serve the residents that live there to have yeah. a better quality, quality of life, life and, and a, a safe property. It totally changed the concept. And I think that people feel that and they, they take more ownership. Tenants, renters, residents, even even if they're renting, they take ownership of the property where they live in the, the entire complex. Because I walked the properties. I saw it. There's no trash around. There's nothing around there. People take good pride of it. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great insight. So the, so I have three kind of tips as you're as you're thinking about your small multis and how to really take them to the next level. So the first one is rebranding. I didn't really get the concept of rebranding a building until we owned a 49 unit. And this building really needed uh, a sense of rebranding. I mean, it's actually uh, a beautiful building. I don't know if you've seen this building. Have you ever been there, Andres? Lancaster? Yeah, you've been up there? No, I have not. I've seen pictures. I got to get you there, you know? It's really a um, converted lofts, converted factory actually into lofts. So it had a lot of historical, kind of like a really neat vibe to it. But it definitely needed a rebrand. And so what we did there was not just put a sign on the building, but actually renamed the building. And we've done that consistently after the 49 unit. Now, you're not necessarily on a four unit or on a duplex going to put an enormous sign outside, outside your, your property. I know what you're saying to yourselves right now, like that doesn't make any sense. But even just in the concept of rebranding a duplex is really important. Because again, what you're building upon is not just the duplex, but you're building upon your own brand. You're building upon your own portfolio. What is the vibe that you want people to get when they come up to your building? Andres and I are talking about a photo shoot. And she said, any photo you go into, Liz, you got to think about what's the vibe you're trying to go after? I'm like, oh, that's a great point. Never thought of that. It's the same thing for your buildings. What's the vibe that you want your investors to get, your, your residents to get? So that was, re to me, rebranding. And I, I didn't see the purpose of it until we got a larger building. But had we done that on our smaller buildings, it really would have been very helpful to really, really get clear. And also, so you build a proof of concept, meaning you do this with one duplex, like say you start to really build upon the feel of the working professional. And what would a working professional want and need 
in this particular community that that duplex is in, right? Let's just use that as an example. Then you start to say, okay, how can I do this over and over again? Because yeah. I'm, I'm rebranding, I'm repositioning this. You have to remember owners sell for a reason. There are typically capital expenditures that have not been, you know, money that has not been spent, the roof, the this, the that. There's reasons people sell. It's usually they've gotten to the point where they don't want to reinvest any more money into the building. So you have to be mindful of, okay, when I take this on, how do I rebrand? And also, how do I reposition this building? And one, one thing that people can do with a small unit, you can simply paint the outside, yeah. right? Right now, we are in 2023, black doors, like the black, the white can really elevate. And that elevates also the perceived value of a tenant, right? If you have, we are in Philadelphia, they're like the older bricks, that is like, wow, this is old. This door here with golden knob, it's old, right? And then if you really repaint it and, and, and take the knobs out and put black hardware, that elevates too. So when you're looking at all the properties, what is the, what is the vibe there? As Liz is saying, the rebranding, you're not going to put a huge sign on, sign on your duplex. Right. Well, how can you make it nice? How can you put flower beds on the outside? How can you really elevate what you already have? That's rebranding too. Absolutely. So the second one is amenities. So you, you get this concept when you're, you're buying a larger multi and you're saying, okay, what amenities are here for these residents versus your competition, right? You're hedging your, your competition of what can I offer here for the rent amount and for what the product, what we're giving the, the residents versus other buildings in that area, right? And then you have to think that through, especially on large multi. Really wish I'd thought about that. Really wish we thought about that on our smaller multis. Now, obviously amenities for some of our buildings, especially like class B properties have been a small gym. Again, you're not gonna put a small gym to, to, for your two tenants, right? Or your du in your duplex. But what can you do? And I think, you know, certainly thinking about your customer, thinking about your resident, what do these people need and want? And in so many small multis, Typically, there's no, there's no ability to wash their clothes. And that's important. Coin-operated washer and dryer is one amenity that will put you ab above other smaller multis. And it is actually a great little stream of income, too. I, I actually miss the days of our, of our laundry. Of our, of our washer the dryer. coins? Yeah, I was like, Matt, did you get the coins? Like, that was one of my favorite days of the month, you know? I you know another that, but... quick tip list? Yeah. And I would say... And um, the community, right? If you're going to go to in front of the community to approve your conversion or whatever that is, is designated trash area mm. for your tenants. Because think about it. If you have a one bedroom, two bedrooms, right? Trash start building up and they don't want to keep the trash inside the apartment. So having a designated area for the trash outside not only helps your tenant, but also your community. That's like a, a plus plus because that's what they're thinking. Where if people keep the trash inside the units, you know, pass and, and you attract, right? Um, not friendly tenants to the units. Yeah. That's what they're thinking. So how you're going to manage that. And that is an architect drawing board, how can we create that space from yeah. the beginning? And that's so important for future tenants or future residents looking at the building because if they see a lot of trash, they don't want to live there. No one wants to live where, where there's a lot of trash, obviously. So it actually is a benefit to you in terms of re tenant retention, a resident retention and finding new ones. So the, th the third suggestion, so again, amenities that work for your particular building was the second one. And again, you don't have to get crazy, but you have to think about how do I, how do I differentiate the product that I'm building here, this duplex, okay, I'm rebranding it. And how do I create an, an amenity that is going above and beyond? It's cost effective, of course, we're real estate investors, but it also differentiates the building from others that are the choices that your, your potential resident has. So the third one and the last one I have is, is really community building. I don't think I got that. We had one four unit on a, a street in New Jersey many moons ago. And then we bought another four unit. And, and when we sold those buildings many years ago, we ended up having about 20 units at that point. And that was probably the first time we scaled on a, on a street, right? And it, was, and it was actually interesting because had we done a better job of building a community within those 20, 20 units and, you know, handful of buildings, I think we would have created a lot more retention, 
and we would have created a lot more of like a positive buzz. And so I didn't get that lesson until we started getting into large multi where you, know, you have a hundred units. The need for community building is key. It's essential because why is that important? All of these people are in either one complex or multiple complexes. You want to say, what, what, in, you know, what community building cost-effective things can I do? Playgrounds. We always tend to put playgrounds in. We always tend to put dog parks in. Uh, really having a designated area for a beautiful garden. You know, if these people have, have apartments, they don't have a place to do a garden. So you create a community garden and you could do that on a small building. You could do that on a large building. But just the conversation of how do we bring our residents together and create a community does increase your retention. It does increase camaraderie between these people. And that's important on multifamily because you could have people that are at odds together. <laughs> We've all had those situations. Yeah. Or actually living kind of in a way that works for everyone. So you can do community building with a duplex. And the idea I have for you is say you own one duplex. Now, obviously, you're going to not have a party with two people or two families. But what could you do? You could do a block party. And do something community oriented. Number one, this connects you to the people in the community from the perspective of potential deals, potential leads. You're also getting to know your neighbors. You own the building. I'd want to know my neighbors. I do that when in my own residence. Why wouldn't I want to do it for a building I own, uh, especially that I'm rebranding and really building my portfolio? So do that in the summertime. And then obviously in, involve and include your, your, your two tenants or your two residents, but you really want to be mindful of how to build a community within the constraints that you have. So that's my third tip. Liz, I would say that for for the, the folks that are listening right now that have small multis, you know where they're thinking? Many of them are like, I don't have the budget to do that, right? And here's what I encourage you to think about. This is a marketing budget. This is not something that you're like an afterthought. As a marketing budget, you plan once a year to do this block party. So intentionally, you're killing a lot of birds with one stone, as Liz said, right? You don't, you get to know the neighbors. They, they, you become a perceived landlord. That changes because if they don't know who the landlord is, and it yeah. could be your property management company. It could be it. They're representing that property. It does not need to be you if you don't feel comfortable with that. And then you really intentionally are investing in that. So it's not like, oh, let me throw some money out here so people can have fun. It's very intentional for your brand, for leads, for your tenants. And that makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. So, so in summary, rebranding. And, and number one, refer to your tenants as residents. That was the first kind of tip. But rebranding, what amenities can you put in that work? and also community building. So hopefully you take something from today's mini-sode and put it into action and start treating those small multis as large multis or large buildings because you'll get a lot of bang for your buck. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.